Well, hi guys. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming to our third service. Um, it's really exciting and it's just an honor and a privilege to be up here and speaking. I have a couple of my friends in the back who came, so shout out to Monica and Tabitha. So yay! No. Yeah, but before I start, I would just like to open in prayer, so if anyone, everyone will bow their heads with me. So Father God, I thank you for today. Um, I thank you for this church and this service and for everybody um, in this place to make this happen, Lord. Um, I thank you for your faithfulness, and I just pray that um, you give me the words to speak and just remind me that these are your words and not mine, and just let your, your presence overflow in this place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So. Um, for the past um, about month and a half, our school, I go to Hope International University, we have, we had a theme, we have a theme of being known. So each year for the new students, we have a theme just like to welcome them in, to make them feel more comfortable. And for the past three years, our theme has been Hope is My Home. So um, the housing department and a couple um, other departments decided to come together and just to create a new theme, um, a strong theme that just um, gets people um, to feel like they're at home and just to make them feel comfortable. So after just great just um, ideas and just um, brainstorming, we came up with the idea of known, being known. And um, what, is that, what does that mean? So I'm a resident advisor at Hope. Um, and what that is is I'm in charge of two halls in the dorms of seniors and juniors. And there's nine, there's eight other RAs. So while we were in training um, about a month ago, we were going around the table and just, we were asked this question. Let me get my little clicker out. Uh, I'll press the right button. What does known mean to you? And as we were going around the table, everybody was giving their answer, and they were giving strong answers. And when it came around to me, I said, I want to be known for the things that glorify the kingdom of God, that give God the credit, that gives him just glorification for everything that I do. And um, so according to Merriam-Webster, known means generally recognized. So when you're known for something, you're usually recognized by this thing. So for instance, I'm Ray or Raylene. Um, you call me either one. I'm known for being an RA at Hope. I'm also known as being the youth intern here at Sunny Hills. I'm known for being an, an assistant at Hope. I'm also known for being loud, extra, extrovert. <laughs> I'm also known as the girl who broke her toe while running into her mini fridge, but not going to get into that because I get made fun of a lot at school about that. Um, but that's who I'm known for. And when people see me or they hear my name, usually these are the things that I'm known for. That These are the things I'm recognized as. But let me ask you a question. When people see you or hear your name, what do you think you are known for? I want you to think about that for a second. Because sometimes we just, we think what we're known for is what we think. But how other people view us and how we're known for can have a really big impact on who we are. So what certain things do people recognize? What do you, what do you think? I just want you to think about that for a second. What are you known for? How are you recognized? Let me ask you another question. And are the things you're known for glorify the kingdom of God? Because there are a lot of things that we're known for that can either glorify the kingdom of God or glorify ourselves. I want to shift gears a little bit, and I want to talk about a man who is known for a lot of things. Um, so if you guys would go with me to Acts chapter 8, um, verses 1 through 3, or it'll be on the board. Um, sorry if you can't read that, but... <laughs> so it says, Saul was one of the witnesses, and he agreed completely with the killing of Stephen. A great wave of persecution began that day. Generous and gracious our Lord was. Wait, sorry. Nope. <laughs> um, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem, and all the believers except the apostles were scattered through the regions of Ju Judea and Samaria. Some devout men came and buried Stephen with great mourning. But Saul was going everywhere to destroy the church. He went from house to house, dragging out both men and women to throw them in prison. So Saul, before he was Paul, was known for many great, not great things before he was Paul. He was known for horrible things. He was trying to destroy the church. He was trying to kill Christians, and he was taking measures to kill Christians. But everything he was known for only glorified himself. What Saul was known for gave himself the credit. He, didn't, he wasn't trying to glorify the kingdom of God. He was trying to destroy it and be, bring it down. 
Those are certain things that he was known for before he had the experience where Jesus had changed his life. He was selfish. He wanted, he, he wanted his name to be number one. He wanted his name to be over God and over the kingdom of God because he was trying to destroy the church. Obviously, what he was known for did not glorify the kingdom of God because he, what he was known for only glorified himself. We can all relate to Saul in this way. I'm not saying that we're murderers or anything like that, but I'm saying that certain things that we're known for can only glorify ourselves and not the kingdom of God. So when I was in high school, um, I played a lot of sports. I played volleyball, softball, and um, basketball. And in, during that time, I only wanted to be glorified for myself. I didn't care if my team won or if we lost by 50. All I was worried about and how I wanted to be glorified was how many points did Ray make? How many runs did, did she make? How many digs did she get during a game? I wanted the glorification and the credit to my, sorry, sorry, Mark. <laughs> sorry. I wanted the glorification and the credit to myself. I didn't care about what I did or what I said and how it affected other people because as long as I was making my name number one and glorifying myself, that's all that mattered. But let me tell you something. Trying to get to the top or trying to be at the top by yourself is a very lonely place. And it put me in a really dark spot that it was really hard to get out of. Because when you're trying to glorify yourself, you would step on other people and stab everybody in the back no matter what it takes. If, if only that meant being number one, getting the glorification, taking the credit for yourself. I was very selfish in high school. And sometimes it's hard to believe, but I didn't care about what other people did. I just wanted the credit. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, I just wanted the glorification for myself. Um, so I would, I would step, over, step over friends. I would just um, st um, stab my friends in the back to just to make sure that I was getting further ahead of them than they were. And in all this, in a sense, just like Saul, I was trying to destroy his church, destroy the kingdom of God in order to give myself the credit, to give myself the glorification because in my mind, I thought that I was number one. I thought if I did this, or if I got my, if I got to myself, if I got myself to the top, that's all that mattered, and I didn't need anybody else. Everybody else can st stand behind me. So fast forward when I got to college, I kind of wanted a, a, um, a start over, a reboot, um, but that didn't happen as quick as I thought it would. Um, I was still very selfish. I still wanted people at Hope's campus to know me, to know Ray, to know what I was doing. Hence, I have a lot of positions at Hope, and in a way, I kind of abused that power. I was taking the glorification for myself and the credit for myself for things that other people were doing, and one of them being God, because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have any of those positions. For the past nine months, it has been a struggle. Um, Back in January when I started here, I was very negative, very, very negative. And that's how people knew me as on Hope's campus and just people who knew me. I was very negative. I, was, I wasn't trying to uplift situations. I was just trying to bring them down as much as I can, um, as much as I could. I was um, very unhappy with myself. And it took, a strong, it took strong people around me to say, hey, this is what you're known as. And it took my best friend to sit me down and say, hey, Ray, People know you as being negative and they don't want to hang out with you. That was in June and that was a real eye opener. Um, I sat there and I cried in front of her and I said, what, what should I do? What can I do? And it took her saying, we need some time apart in order for you to, for yourself to get right with God, to have him help you through the things that you're struggling with. And through all this, all this that I was struggling with, I, I'm known as a runner, you know, the flight or fight risk. Yeah, I'm known as the flight. Like, see me, like, I'll see you later. Like, I'll dip. Like, I'll get out of here. And what I'm about to say next is I don't want anybody to get offended or anything, but this is me being completely honest with you guys. Um, back in June when my best friend sat me down, um, I did something. I made a decision that um, as spur of the moment how I was feeling, um, I wanted to flight, and I wanted to flight from this church. Um, I wanted to run away, so I did the... I did the unbelievable, and I applied for a different internship because I thought, 
well, maybe, maybe it's where I'm at, what I'm doing is wh why I'm this way or why is it affecting me. And I apply to another place. And um, through all that, the other place said no. And with me actually like, realizing and God saying, like, is that what you want to be known for? As someone who wants, who, someone who leaves what I'm telling you to be at? He brought me here for a reason and I was trying to leave. You know, there are certain times in our life where it's like we would rather leave, and that's what, we, that's what we're known as. I was a very negative person, and by that, I wanted to leave. I wanted to leave everywhere. I wanted to leave my position. I wanted to leave here, and it was a hard moment. Um, back in August, um, we had a RA retreat at um, one of my teammates' house, and team members' house, and we're sitting around the, the fire, and we're sharing testimonies. And it was my turn to share my testimony. And um, I was just explaining to them everything that I'm explaining to you now. And um, before I finished, I sat down. I said, I want to be known as someone who has a calling and has a purpose. And with that calling and purpose, I want to glorify the kingdom of God. I don't want to be known as someone who leaves situations because I'm uncomfortable. I was, I was tired of taking the credit for myself. I got tired of getting the glorification for myself because it wasn't getting me anywhere. It wasn't getting me anywhere. Instead of going forward, I was going backwards because I was trying to run in the opposite direction of where God was trying to have me go. It was then that in that moment, I cried my eyes out in front of my 10 team members and my two directors, and I told them, I am tired of being known as the girl who's negative, being, knows, being known as the girl who leaves instead of stays, who would rather um, fight, who, no, who would rather flight to a different direction than stay and fight. And it was a hard moment, but it was a moment that I had with God to, for him to ask me, how do you want to be known as? Do you want to be known as someone who glorifies my kingdom? Sorry, but do you want, or do you want to be known as someone who only glorifies yourself and doesn't get anywhere with that? And it was a very, very hard, rude awakening, but it was something that I needed in order to, to figure out what I wanted to be known for. It took that small moment of realizing the theme of being known to have me realize and God speak to me of like, this is not how I want you to be known as. Because everything that I was known as was only glorifying myself and other people saw that. Because they recognized me as someone who is an assistant or this and that, but not anywhere did I mention where I was known as someone who glorified the kingdom of God. And that was a problem with me because I'm standing up here because of him. I'm glorifying, I'm glorifying his kingdom because of him. No matter like what you do in your life, there are certain things that we're known as, but certain things that we're known as only glorifies ourself and our name. And that's how people recognize us. When they see your name, see your face. We can say and do things that we may not want to be known for. Because at times we may be thinking of only what we want and we want to be known for. If we're Christians and followers of God, we should be known for that. I want to go back to Paul for a second. Um, in 1 Timothy chapter, chapter 1, verse 12 through 17, he says this. He says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength to do his work. He considered me trustworthy and imported me to serve him. Even though I used to blasph blasphemy the name of Christ in my insolence, I persecuted his people. But God had mercy on me because I did it in ignorance and unbelief. Oh, how generous and gracious our Lord was. He filled me with the faith and love that, that come from Christ Jesus. This is a trustworthy saying and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I'm the worst of them all. But God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patience with even the worst sinners. Then others will realize that too. They can believe in him and receive eternal life. All honor and glory to God forever and ever. He is the eternal king, the unseen one who never dies. He alone is God. In this passage, Paul gave all glorification to God and to his kingdom. Not once did he give glorification to himself. 
And that's how I want to be. I want to be like that. I want to be known as Ray, the one who glorifies the kingdom of God, not the one who sends 50 emails to people on a daily basis. Because it took nine months, nine months of me realizing that to get out of that deep, dark hole that I was in, to realize that what I was doing was only giving the glorification and the credit to myself. And I was done. I'm done with it because I don't want the credit. I don't deserve the credit because the only reason why I'm up here is by the grace of God because he saved my soul, he saved my life in order for me to glorify his kingdom, to glorify his name. Because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even be standing in this building on this stage. We should be known for the things that glorify the kingdom of God instead of ourselves. So that when we come across people who we don't know, who do not know Jesus, that they can see and feel the impact of Jesus' love and everything else. Together we can be known for things that glorify the kingdom of God. And with that, we can be the bridge from the unknown believers to Jesus. What I want everyone to do is Jessica and Izzy are going to pass out wood tags. And what I want you to do is I want you to write down one word that you, want, that you want to be known for to glorify the kingdom of God. And on the back of that, I want you to write the date, today's date. Because I want this to be a daily reminder when you look at that date and you look at that word, that today was, <laughs> that today was the day that you decided to be known for something that glorifies the kingdom of God. So we could take a few minutes and we can do that and I'll do one too. One word you want to be known for. Now, if you're still writing, that's okay, but um, I want everyone to stand up for a second. I'm going to close on this. I'll close in a minute. For the past couple weeks, we've been talking about being united through our differences. Um, and this church is amazing, and you, we have done that. We need to be known for being united and for bringing other people in who do not know God, who do not know the kingdom of, the kingdom of God. I don't have anything written on it yet, but with this tag, I want this to be a daily reminder, a daily reminder how we can be known to those around us who do not know Jesus, who do not know God. Because in a sense, we're the first step for people on getting to know Jesus. My friend told me a quote um, a couple months back. He said, make people fall in love with you so they can fall in love with Jesus. And that's who we need to be known for. I want everybody to just ha keep this as a daily reminder. Because if we can be known for that, we can then glorify the kingdom of God by, you, by, you, by being united and being known for that. Let us pray. Father God, I... I thank you for who you are. I thank you for your kingdom and for your grace and for your mercy and your love. I pray that as we step out of these doors and we go on with the rest of the week, that we just, we just are known, known for things that glorify your kingdom, that glorify you and that give you the credit instead of us, Lord. I pray that you be with us every step of the way. I pray this in your son's Jesus' name. Amen.